Please be advised that this video is for the sole purpose of entertainment. Any views are purely my own, are subjective, and may not necessarily be true. I do, however, do extensive research for all of my videos. All photos have been found in the public domain, and I am using them under the fair use and fair dealing guidelines. I urge everyone to do their own research and to view this video subjectively. Well, hello, it's Murky Meg here. Now, I know you all love me very much and I love you all very much too, but as you can tell, my voice is about to go. So, I'm hoping that it won't go throughout this video. Um, I'm gonna battle on through, but bear in mind that if my voice completely goes, then I cannot do a video. So you may not see me for a couple of days, but if you don't see me, don't worry, I'm absolutely fine. It's just my throat has gone. It's September the 18th and stories are circling at the moment that there's only one person that Megan actually trusts to advise her, and that is her mum. Now, I find this quite worrying because one, she doesn't actually have any idea about royal protocol. How could she? She just hasn't been brought up within the royal life. So how can she advise Meghan on what's best for her royal family endeavours and the way that she should portray them? I find this really quite odd because there are advisors that are set up within the royal family that know in and out about protocol, how everything should be portrayed, how the public may react. This is their bread and butter. This is what they do. They are employed to advise everybody on the matters of how the public will perceive them. Because ultimately, that's the end game, isn't it? How we perceive the royal family. Without us, there would be no royal family. So to actually suggest that the only person that she will take guidance from is her mum, while well, yes, every or most girls and women do think of their mothers as role models, is this the right choice? There are two issues that concern me with this, and first is the word advisor. Now, to suggest somebody is your advisor would be to imply, in my opinion, that they are on the payroll. Somebody who gives advice is just somebody who is giving friendly or motherly family advice. To actually say she's an advisor strikes me as quite worrying. Is she getting paid for this role? Uh, who knows? They are so secretive, you just don't know. So do you think she's being paid for this advisory role? What do you think? We've seen it in the figures that suggest that she has amassed a fortune of $9 million in the short space of three years. Put these two together, and yet again, I don't think it's a coincidence, do you? I've stated many times I don't believe in them. The fact that she, her bank balance is growing and growing, and yet Megan is, says that she is the only advisor that she trusts. And some papers are actually reporting that she travels back and forth between the home in Los Angeles and Windsor's. And she advises the couple on everything from living arrangements to staff issues. And one even suggested that she was the one that was responsible for letting go one of the nannies Megan hired after Archie's birth. This woman has been given a pivotal role within a royal, within a royal household family. And I don't think that's very fair. She's got no experience whatsoever on royal life. And I think it's quite shocking, really. But what is really concerning is that the fact that Harry today has announced details of the mental health program that he's doing for Apple and Oprah. He said that the series will tell tales of human spirit fighting back from the darkest of places. When Oprah originally pitched the idea to Prince Harry, she asked him, what do you think the most important issues that we're facing in the world right now? And Harry responded that climate change and mental wellness, mental fitness and mental health are the most important things right now. Can anybody else see the actual blatant irony of that saying with who he's married to? She's the biggest gaslighter of them all. But here's the thing. 
that's worrying me with this project is that he's working with Oprah, who has, over the last couple of years, formed an incredibly tight bond with Oprah, Meghan's dear old mum. What's the betting? She's got a pivotal part to play in this mini-series behind the scenes, and just to make sure that that nine million increases even more. Hiding her involvement wouldn't be that hard at all. You just need a pseudonym, really. Plenty of artists have done it in the past. If you know how to do it, it's pretty standard stuff. Speaking of Meghan's family, we've now been subjected to yet another woke quote. This time, it's a rather predictable Dalai Lama quote about compassion. I find it rather silly that she does this, to be honest. It adds nothing but a slight shade to her Instagram account. And it's so clearly obvious that she's trying to steer the narrative when we all know royals are not allowed to bite back. It's so clear she's trying to do this. She's trying to hit back at all the press and the negative attention by releasing these silly little girly quotes that she used to do on the TIG. And I mentioned in my previous video about the TIG.2, the comparisons are just there, they're silly, and this is what she wants her Instagram to be all about. It's TIG Mark II. What's odd is that she's chosen this particular quote with the fact that she's ostracised her father. Now, I know he's no saint and he's done some things perhaps he shouldn't have done. But at the end of the day, he's still her father. The same father that she gushed over in her old TIG blog. By doing this, she's opened up herself to people saying that she's a hypocrite even more because she constantly posts these wise words that people have said and they're just silly and childish really because there are far more important matters at hand than to basically hit back at the haters using somebody else's words but that's how she's always done it she has no genuine words of her own because it's all just word salad and repeated things that she has heard from somebody else's mouth. All this is doing is feathering her own agenda by setting herself up as some sort of shining icon so that when she launches whatever career she wants to launch in America, be it global actress or philanthropist humanitarian or politician, she will have loads of silly little girls following her shouting how much they love her. She has a serious issue because she has a pathological need for attention. By spouting this nonsense, she opens up herself to yet more criticism because surely her first candidate for compassion should be her father. What do you all think on Doria being the only trusted advisor that Meghan will ask help and advice from? What do you think of Harry's new venture with Oprah? And most importantly, what do you think of her woke quote? Love to hear your views as ever. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, please hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And hit that notification bell. And I will see you very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.